Uh, this is a quick introduction to the ES5210, uh, both available in single and three phase um, configurations. Um, I'm just going to walk through some of the main overviews of the, uh, of the machine and then we'll come back later and get more detail on everything uh, on the machine, the, the particular cutting, uh, plunging, and then uh, setting up your different cutting uh, stops. So as I walk over here, uh, I'm going to start right at the beginning of the machine. You've got a le main electrical box on the back side of the machine, which is your main power outlet. Uh, in use during the day while you're using that, you can have that switch on, uh, and then you can operate and start and stop your machine over on the, on the main power head, which we will go through when I get over there in just a minute. So uh, again, to operate the machine, you turn on here. Your main switches are right here, green for uh, on, red for stop, and then of course you've got your emergency stop uh, switch here for, for, for a quick shutdown in any type of emergency. Uh, we'll walk through this head a little bit. So the machine is set up to both uh, vertically cut and rip cut. Uh, right now, if you can see the head's in the rip cut position, uh, I'm sorry, cross cut position, um, and what that does is that allows you to have four different cutting um, lines on your machine. If you notice the numbers on the very top of the machine, uh, one, two, over here, and then there's a uh, zero and another one over here. You can actually, depending on where you want as your center for cutting, you can use move your head by pulling this locking mechanism here and sliding your beam to the new location. And it locks into position. Generally, most people do cut on the middle position or the zero position, uh, and that is where a lot of the uh, the measurement guides that you'll see here uh, center off from from the middle position, cutting position. Also, on this measuring guide while we're here, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, the stop system itself. If you can kind of zoom in here a little bit, you'll notice that. Uh, the stop system actually has a magnifying glass on there so you can see the line very well. It slides along and then you can actually lock it into position. Now it's stopped and so now you can tip this forward so you can have your material butt up against that so you can repeat cuts. Very important to use that uh, when you're doing cuts just so your panel doesn't move when you push up against that, especially in, um, in any uh, rip cutting uh, positions. Another feature uh, of this machine uh, is called our midway fence. If you're cutting smaller panels, you can actually move your midway fence out. Take your small panel, get set up on top of the, on the fence as so. And again, use your stop because especially with small panels, you've got a very large head that's going to be cutting panels. So if you're doing any ripping up there, you want to use your stop system uh, for doing that. Lock in. One last uh, discussion point, which is a major point from a user standpoint. Um, for moving your head to, from uh, vertical cutting to horizontal cutting, there's a small lever over here on the side. We'll get a little more detail on this a little bit later as we get closer into the head. And it, you lock it into position. And you lock that into position based on some measurement indicators in the bottom here, where you want to do your rip cut. You must have your head all the way out, so it can't be plunged in to rotate. You must have it all the way out. Grab your handle here, pull here, your head rotates, and then you have to need to keep this pulled. If you notice I didn't have that, pull like that, drops in. Now you're able to plunge in. It should be very easy to plunge in and out um, as you need to. Again, I'm going to rotate it back. Very important to use both hands in the rotation so you don't let it drop into position. It's just tough on the machine. It's counterweighted, so it's not you're not lifting all that weight. It's very, very easy to rotate, but uh, it's good to keep your hands on there as you rotate it back and forth. You can all unlock this so you can move this head back up to the top. Um, and then what we'll do now is we'll just uh, we'll take a little break here and come back, and what we'll talk about is the head. We'll get it zoomed in on the head so you can see all the features of the head itself. All right, we're back here with the ES5210. Uh, we are now currently set up to do horizontal cutting, uh, also known as uh, rip cutting. Um, as you can see, I'm gonna really focus on 
some of the functions up in this area. Um, right now I have this locked in at approximately 47 inches to do a, a, a rip cut at 47 inches. You'll notice that when I plunge my, plunge my head in, my frame automatically moves. What that does is that allows me to cut anywhere on this frame um, a rip cut and not cut either my plastic strips or my aluminum in the back. The machine generally will never cut your aluminum strips. We have seen where, you know, after you, you, you uh, hit some plastic strips, you can replace those. We have those as a stock item. Uh, again, you can watch how that functions in. That's all done mechanically and it's all set up in the back. It shouldn't be anything you have to adjust or work with, but it's all set up for you. Um, as we zoom in here a little bit more, um, I'm going to just show you a couple things in this feature. I'm going to unlock my head over here and we'll show you that a little bit tighter in a minute. But I'm going to come down. Now as you can see, I've got a tape measure on this side which we'll address in a minute. But as you come down, you can see I can set my head anywhere I want to to make that cut. Now, I also have a um, reiteration stop that's set up on this machine. So what I can do is if I want to repeat that same cut every time through the rip position, I can set that horizontal, that reiteration stop so that it rides right on the top of my panel. Now what I'm going to do, and I'll, again I'll show you this other stuff on this other side in a minute here. But this allows me, if you notice, that, that just rolls along the top of your panel. So that's going to keep your nice straight cut all the way through that. So now once I've made that cut, remove my top panel, I can actually reset, I just leave that set where it is, just drop my head down again, and I get that same exact panel again when I rip cut. So it's very easy, very easy to do. Of course, when I'm not using this, I just loosen it up, and I can either take it out, Right, put it back in just like so, lock it into position. Another thing I'm going to show you while we got this head in the horizontal position is uh, a couple a couple things right here. Uh, when you plunge it all the way in, you can actually pull your pull your guard back for your saw blade. There's no other time. If you notice, you, you, your guard will not pop back or forth if if you um, are not plunged in. So when I'm not plunged in, when I'm out. There's a little lever handle over here, and I'll show you again on the other side when we get there. But when you pull on that lever handle, you can't move that guard in and out. That's a safety feature. It only works when it's plunged all the way in. Um, and then this knob here is actually for a riving knife on the back side. Again, when I'm plunged in, I don't know if you can zoom in here tight enough. You'll see there's a riving knife there. You can actually adjust your riving knife via this, this small knob here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to lock this, make sure I hit every feature over on this side for you. Um, if you want to just come in here and take a little look, kind of looking at this side, I mean, basically these are all mechanical things. Everything else you've kind of um, seen how it works in there. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to rotate this head and maybe take a look back here. Watch. Again, I have to have my head all the way out. It never hurts to have your head in a rip position um, for that. But now I'm just going to rotate my head. Comes back like this, and again, I can rotate my head. Now I'm going to lock in position. Let's walk over to this side real quick. Um, again, this was the lever to move your saw foot in and out. You just pull this. Now, I can't pull it out because I, I have to be plunged in. Um, and then also, um, here's some other features. This is your rip lock. So when I loosen this knob here, I can move my head up and down. And you can see it a little bit better here. Here's our tape guides. We've got one tape guide set up for doing uh, midway fence and one tape guide set up to, to read off your bottom of your, 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 main, your main base. So you, of course those are adjustable if you need to, but they, they should all be adjusted from the factory. You can also have, if you have, um, we, we talked with the reiteration stop on the back side, if you have common stops that you have, you can actually adjust these to different positions on here, and then when you want to come down to that stop, boom, you hit that stop, lock it in position, and now you've had that. So if you've got four or five different rip cuts you do all the time, that's perfect for that. All right, I'm just going to rotate this head one more time so you can see that again. You've got two different uh, indexing pin holes. Rotate the head. Go to vertical positioning. We'll come back here in just a minute to talk about the vertical cutting and some of the uh, um, ways you can do that. Uh, now we're back here with the ES5210. Uh, we're in the vertical position. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the, again, the stop, uh, the tape measures, and also the cutting uh, uh, different spots that you can cut on there, especially the, the zero point and the one here. 
So uh, kind of come down this area here a little bit. You'll see I have my stop again set for any type of um, basically vertical cutting. And if you see the upper tape measure is actually uh, zeroed out again at the zero. Um, so you've got a cutting point of zero here to say 34 inches and then same the opposite way. And then position one, when I locked in position one, I'll show you the locking feature in a minute. Uh, when you do that, you can actually put your, slide this off the end and you can put it on the bottom. And now you can actually uh, use a different uh, dimension for cutting if you're cutting a little shorter stuff here. And then this runs one all the way over to that end of the frame. Let me show you how this panel slides in. Just watch that stop for a minute. Again, I load my panel generally from left to right uh, just to use the, use the machine correctly. Slide up, hit my stop. So again, this is vertical cutting. Um, again, you want to use your stop when you're doing rip cutting too. Same idea, slide it in up against that. And then of course move your head, your, your saw head, from left to right through your panel. So now once I'm locked in that position, now I can make my cut. I just bring my head down, unlock my rip lock if it's locked, and now I can come down to make any type of cutting I want to do. My panel cuts down all the way through. And a good, good procedure for when you're cutting vertically um, is, and the reason this handle rotates is just like this. Grab your handle here, come down through, and as you get a little lower, rotate that handle, push all the way through. Hits the bottom, bring it back up. Again, of course, you got to make sure you're plunged all the way in. I'm not plunged in right now, uh, but you do need to be plunged all the way in to make your cut all the way through your panel. Mark this in position. I'm going to try to make sure you can see this really well. Again, the, um, the locking mechanism up here, if you want to see this quick. Now watch, what I do is there's a foot pedal down here in the bottom. I just push that foot pedal, it locks out of that position. I can slide that along. Generally, controlled speed is good, lock into position. And if you want to just show down here for a minute, you'll see the handle, that's the lock into position, unlock from position. So again, I'm going to move back to this position. And these should lock into position very easily. If there's any issue with locking into position, you may need to re-level your frame or, or do something. But watch, for sure call us if there's any issue where you're seeing you're not locking into position. Um, so again, I'll set up there. I'm going to move this back out of the way and now I can, you know, move my panel as I need it. And I'll show you how this slides off. It just slides off the end. And now I can slide this stop also down on my bottom piece. And I can work down here. Very easy to move back and forth. Some people do like, uh, you know, multiples of these. So these are available for purchase for if you want another one for different stops or keep one on the bottom. Right, I'm back here with the ES5210. We're going to talk a little bit about some micro switches that you may come across uh, in your operations. And they're really safety switches so you don't cut into the frame. Um, and so, you know, you don't uh, cut a piece of material in the wrong direction. So I'm going to turn the machine on. Again, power green button up top here. Now, I'm in the vertical position. I'm locked into a spot where I want to cut. The machine's going to operate fine in the spot. Now, I want to go to a horizontal cut. Well, I'm locked in a position, I go to do it, I can rotate it because my head's all the way plunged out. I lock in, oh, the machine shuts on. There's a micro switch. When this head is locked into position, that tells me that I'm really supposed to be doing a vertical cut. So I actually need to be out of a locked position and in the horizontal position to run the machine motor. The motor will restart. Now again, if I go in and lock into a position in the horizontal, it's going to shut my machine down. So sometimes some people think, oh, my machine's not operating. But it is very important that if you're going to be in the vertical position, you're locked in a spot to operate. If you're going to be in the horizontal position, then you're not locked in a spot. One other micro switch that can be a, uh, sometimes uh, I catch by somebody is basically this one right here. It's in your blade, blade box. And I'm not going to open this all the way. We'll come back here in just a minute and talk about blade changes. But it's basically in here. And there's a small micro switch, so if this door is open or loose a little bit, the machine will not start also. All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to um, talk about how you change your blade. Again, open this up. Of course, always make sure your power is off over here. There's your switch over on this side. You just switch your power off. 
um, lockout, line lockout on any type of procedure. And then when you get inside here, you'll notice there's a large blade in there. And all you do is basically put your wrench on here, here to hold your arbor. And now you can rotate and to change any of your blades. So uh, fairly easy and generally you want it plunged in. If you plunge in when you do it, this foot will actually can kind of be out of your way a little bit more too, but uh, it, you can do it either way really. Um, but you can get in there to make any, any transitions of your blades. Sharp blades are very important. One other thing I want to um, show you while we're here is, uh, I'm just going to rotate this real quick. I think I didn't talk about a little earlier in one of the presentations was, get down here. I'm going to just zoom in over here a little bit. If you look on the back here, there's a small set screw here also. So um, that'll actually, you can minor adjust the depth of your blade a little bit. So if you have, you sharpen your blade and you're not quite going through all your material, you can actually just screw that back a little bit and that'll let you plunge in a little further. All right. Thank you for taking the time to go through our training on the ES5210. If you have any other questions, please call our 800 number, 772-2327, or visit our website or drop us an email. Thank you.